is going to be discussing the facts of the claim that vaccines cause autism. I'll save my rather unforgiving opinion of that until the end, and in the meantime, I'll just discuss the undisputed facts of the claim. Note that I've got a personal interest in this issue, as a lot of patients that I see are afflicted with autism, and this is a discussion that I have to have far more often than I need to with concerned parents. So to begin, autism is a behavioral disorder, and the symptoms usually become evident within the first two years of life. There's a wide range of severity. People afflicted with it um, usually can have anything from mild social impairment to far more severe manifestations. Autism is also actually a spectrum of disorders, which has been around for some time. The claim is that autism is caused by the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine. That's MMR for short. The MMR vaccine is typically administered near the first birthday. It's been estimated that in the first 20 years of MMR vaccination in the U.S. alone, nearly 52 million cases of the disease, 17,000 cases of mental retardation, and 5,000 deaths were prevented. Measles is actually a very serious disease. From the 1970s until recently, the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine had nearly eradicated these deadly diseases. That was until February of 98, when a single scientific paper was published in the medical journal The Lancet that claimed to have evidence linking the MMR vaccine to autism. The paper was written in part by Dr. Andrew Wakefield and claimed that two-thirds of patients developed autistic symptoms as well as inflammatory bowel disease within two weeks of being exposed to the vaccine. This is a pretty remarkable claim and it of course led to media uproar, prompting widespread research into the matter, fueled by fears of well-intentioned parents. Before long, vaccination rates had plummeted and actress Jenny McCarthy, among others, joined the crusade against reason, blaming the vaccine for her son's autism. This prompted the scientific community to immediately investigate the possible link, launching some of the largest, most extensive epidemiological studies mankind has ever undertaken. As a result of this widespread investigation, a number of papers emerged which blatantly contradicted Wakefield's findings. Other scientists who attempted to reproduce the experiment all independently found that their data blatantly contradicted Wakefield's. In other words, Wakefield's study didn't overlap with reality. Such papers can be found in The Lancet with titles such as Autism M MMR Vaccine, No Epidemiological Evidence for a Causal Association, as well as Negative Association Between MMR and Autism. So around 1999, the evidence was rather clear that the MMR vaccine didn't cause autism. This prompted some parents to the conclusion that, well, maybe the MMR vaccine didn't cause autism after all, it was instead the thimerosal in the vaccines that did so. Please note that this, of course, is illogical, since the evidence clearly states that there's no link between vaccines and autism in the first place. Nevertheless, thimerosal is a preservative that was used up until 2001 in the U.S. in most vaccines. Partly because of this concern, it was removed in 2001 while the evidence was being examined. Once again, it was determined that there is no evidence that thimerosal is linked to autism. This study demonstrates lack of a link. Sweden and Denmark removed thimerosal in the 80s and 90s, and the U.S. not until 2001. So if thimerosal contributed to autism, we would expect to see autism rates higher in the U.S. than in countries where thimerosal had been removed decades earlier. So by comparing the autism incidence rates in all three countries, one could reasonably determine whether or not thimerosal was the culprit. The authors did just that and definitively concluded that autism rates in the U.S. were not lower than in thimerosal-free countries. As if this wasn't enough, another study demonstrated that the discontinuation of thimerosal-containing vaccines was actually followed by an increase in the incidence of autism, thus ruling out thimerosal as a possible etiological factor. So there are many other studies examining this as well, such as this one from California, with a sample size of over 120,000 children, once again demonstrating that thimerosal does not cause autism. So at this point, it should be pretty clear to all reasonable people that vaccines don't cause autism. If you still feel the evidence is lacking, take a look at this meta-analysis from 2009. It thoroughly examined over 20 peer-reviewed papers published between 99 and 2004. It also definitively concluded that there was no link between vaccines and autism. And in case you're wondering, a meta-analysis is essentially one giant study based on data from multiple other studies, and it's considered to be the strongest, most accurate form of analysis that there is in the scientific community. One of the studies that it actually examined was also from Denmark, and it compared the incidence of autism in children who had received both different levels of thimerosal and no thimerosal at all. It concluded that there was absolutely zero difference in autism rates. So if vaccines don't cause autism, the natural question is, what does? Well, generally speaking, there are only two categories of causes. It can be something genetic that causes it, or something environmental that causes it. The gold standard way to determine if something is genetically or environmentally caused is to compare the incidence rates of the disease in identical twins, fraternal twins, and siblings. 
And yes, I'm oversimplifying, but this is by far the best way to determine what causes a specific disease. The scientific literature echoes results like this one, a paper demonstrating that genetics is up to 90% responsible for autism. Environmental influence? Not significantly different than zero. So because vaccines are environmental and don't change an individual's genetics, there's no way the vaccines can be responsible. To go even further, scientists are now uncovering exactly what genetic malformations do cause autism. And this paper, published in 2010 in the journal Nature, has been a landmark study. What it essentially did is take a look at the genes of people who are afflicted with autism and compare them to people who don't have autism. What it discovered is that people afflicted with autism have a significantly higher number of what are called genetic copy variants. That is to say, they have certain genes that have been duplicated, inverted, copied, etc. The fact of the matter is that there's no single gene that causes autism. There are several, and alterations in these are correlated to the development of autism. The bottom line is that over the past three decades, studies have been conducted from literally every possible angle to try and determine if vaccines cause autism. The universal conclusion is that no, they do not. There is one exception, however, a singular study published by Wakefield in 98. And this raises an important question. How could he possibly get it so wrong? And the answer is criminal. Click on the link to go to part two of this video, where we'll discuss how this impacts you, as well as the criminal actions undertaken by Wakefield and as punishment.